Terrace Gold, as Glenn has pointed out, is a new company. We are a public, public, public company in Canada. We have to go through a listing event and we have a very exciting opportunity in British Columbia that I'd like to talk to you about. So let me just scroll through the slides for a few minutes and um, give you an idea of, excuse me, I'm going a little too fast, the forward-looking statements, which are always important from an investor perspective. Keras, Keras Gold, what does it represent as an opportunity for an investment case? One, we're looking at a large and growing region. Keras has a dominant land package in the southern portion of the Caribou Gold District. I think many of you will know the key players within this district. To the north, we have uh, Osisco Development Corp, and we'll talk a bit more about that. Uh, as, as really the company that spearheaded the reinvigoration of the Caribou Gold District. Keras's land package, as I pointed out, is in the southern portion of that, that belt. We have multiple opportunities that we're going to be looking at. With a large district land position, it really affords you opportunities and multiple opportunities. The two key opportunities that we're looking at are the FG Gold Project as well as the Gold Creek Project. And I'll talk a bit more about those two opportunities. But also more, more importantly, or just as important, is the concept of looking at old camps with new eyes. And that's really one of the opportunities that Keras offers. We're looking at the style of mineralization at the, the Caribou Gold District in very much a new light, particularly with respect to the areas that we're exploring. They haven't been explored for a long time. New eyes and new uh, ideas on how gold mineralization manifests itself are uh, key aspects of the opportunity that we're presenting. Uh, a little bit about structure. Uh, prior to going public, and we are tracking well towards our listing event later this quarter, there's roughly 82 million shares outstanding. Uh, fully diluted, we're just under 91 million, and we have approximately three and a half million dollars already in uh, the treasury. So a good starting point for a company to go through a listing event. And I would also point out, um, we have strong endorsement with Eric at approximately 27% ownership. This is the management team. Uh, to give you a bit of my experience, I am a geologist, professionally accredited, and I spent more than a dozen years in the exploration industry before becoming a mining analyst. And I retired out of BMO Capital Markets in late 2019 as the senior gold analyst. And I have a very good team beneath me. Uh, Mike Tucker uh, has a lot of good experience in the exploration phase and in the discovery phase, which I truly believe is important. So where do we sit? This map shows you a Cisco Development Corp lies in the northern part of the belt. We lie in the southern part. Spanish Mountain is in the central portion. FG Gold, uh, FG Gold and Gold Creek are the two advanced stage projects that we have on the property package, but we have a number of other opportunities that we'll be advancing towards drill testing through uh, 2021 and into 2022. Key players, I think the, the most interesting thing about this slide is, is this camp is beginning to show size and material size. Historical production, including the current resources that exist at Osisco Development Corp's property, as well as Spanish Mountain, put the Caribou region in excess of 15 million ounces, either mined or identified. We're starting to show um, potential to uh, build a resource capacity, and that's really the focus of what we will be doing over the next several years. And we're really starting to show that this camp is, is definitely showing size potential and moving into, into um, an area that is of a significant endowment. FG Gold is the key project that we're looking at. In it does host a historical resource that we are going to go through the process of resurrecting. And that historical resource has about just under 400,000 ounces in the measured and indicated category and around 600,000 ounces in the inferred category. And that grade of that near surface resource is approximately three quarters of a gram. 
What I would say is we think that that resource doesn't have a lot of structural control embedded in it. And that's one of the key things that we'll be looking at as we move towards resurrecting that resource. But more significantly from our perspective is that the 2020 drill program that was completed by Core Mining, the predecessor of Keras, and, and we are inheriting this good work, showed that drilling significantly beneath that resource estimate or that historical area of drilling, let's just call it that, is showing the potential to expand the footprint of min gold mineralization significantly. And then interesting thing that we, we can present at FG Gold and is demonstrated at FG Gold is on surface, gold mineralization has been identified for over three and a half kilometers of strike potential and a stratigraphic unit that is permissive for that gold mineralization extends for tens of kilometers beyond that. And we're just starting to show that the shallow footprint of mineralization that has been identified historically is wide open at depth beneath that, that uh, drilling. If we zoom into FG, this, this is really what I'm talking about. This tan unit that, that forms this U is really this permissive stratigraphic unit. And here's where the geology comes into play. What we're looking at in the Caribou Gold District is what is called an orogenic, uh, sediment-hosted orogenic gold system. And there are two key controls of gold mineralization with this, within these systems. The first is in this large sedimentary package that has been deformed and metamorphosed, there's often a stratigraphic unit that let's just call it acts as a trap for gold mineralization. It's the best way to explain it. And then through deformation and heating up of the, this large volume of rock, you remobilize gold mineralization within the stratigraphic unit into veins that are um, hosted within uh, folds within that stratigraphic unit. And you upgrade the gold mineralization to higher grade um, endowment. You see that to the north. Um, that's what Cisco Development Corp is focused on. And you see this also at FG Gold. And that's really what we're looking at when we think about the opportunity. Past drilling in the area of known mineralization is intersecting robust gold mineralization. And we definitely need to follow up on many of these intercepts. But more importantly, the drilling beneath that historical area of drilling is beginning to outline very significant gold mineralization. These are uh, mineable widths in an underground scenario and they're quite robust and we're beginning to begin to build the concept of structural continuity with the drilling that came out last year. And here's an example of a cross section through the area of near surface drilling that, that occurred and hosts that historical resource near surface but look at these intercepts at depth, um, close to 14 and a half meters of six grams, uh, close to four and a half meters over 12 and a half grams. This is clearly showing that we can expand the footprint of gold mineralization significantly. What we need to do at FG this year is one, make sure we understand the structural control and the reproducibility of these structural, what we call corridors, and there are multiples of these structural corridors that we think we can identify and then begin to show that we can trace them along strike and start to build volume that will then ultimately move towards a, a, a new resource estimate. This is what the gold mineralization looks like. It's visible gold in quartz veins. And this slide here shows that there's a strong correlation between gold mineralization and quartz veining, just exactly what you would expect. And here really is a model that shows you all the untested potential relative to the historical drilling. This is what we're going to start testing this year. It's going to be a multi-year process, but there is a lot of discovery potential along that path. Gold Creek is the next advanced stage project. It in its own right is a significant um, extension of what Spanish Mountain has identified and has developed a pre-feasibility stage opportunity around. You can see where the out, outline of the pit at Spanish Mountain is. You can see the geochemical anomaly on surface. 
And these are the results. Um, some very interesting results that we need to now go in and demonstrate orientation of structures, particularly this high grade gold mineralization. And that will be the focus. And one finer, final opportunity at um, this land package is we have a plethora of early stage prospects that we will begin advancing to the drill stage. And that really is the opportunity in a nutshell. This is where we are in the path. We're nearing completion of permitting. Everything is tracking fine. And we will begin drilling probably late May, early June. And uh, that's when the program will begin. And that's really it. Uh, from, a, from a pure valuation perspective, you can think about Karis as being one of those pre-resource discovery driven names. And there's a wide spectrum of valuation. We think, and our focus will be to demonstrate that we have multiple fronts for discovery. And we also have one of the largest land packages and I'll leave it there. Thank you.